Then we move on to temperature changes because we've already determined that reactions involve energy. I mean, that's what's driving the whole thing. When we were doing thermodynamics, we were like, this is why something will happen. When we were doing kinetics, we were talking about how something would happen. And here we're just gonna talk about, well, where is the equilibrium? So if we have an energy content that is changed, it is going to change where the equilibrium occurs. It's not because it's the ratio of product to reactant. It's because it actually physically changes the value of K. These start out where they start out, but since K is different than it was, they will get into an equilibrium to go to the new K. The old K would be the Q at this point because you've changed something and until it has achieved the new equilibrium, it has to be considered a Q. So we're just going to think of energy as being another reactant or another product, depending on whether it's an endothermic or exothermic reaction. Now, this is an exothermic reaction. If I increase the temperature in an exothermic reaction, that's the same thing as if I had decided to increase the amount of a product, and it will tend to push the equilibrium back to the left. That means that K is going to end up being a smaller number because the things that are involved in K, this one will be getting smaller, and that's in the numerator, and these will be getting larger, and they are in the denominator. If we decrease the temperature, it's like we took a product out, and that will make the equilibrium want to shift more to the right. But you can just think of K as being products over reactants in some sense. And that then the change in temperature will affect the equilibrium. If we have something that's exothermic, the energy changes look like this. This amount is the amount of energy that was released, almost always is released as heat, which we always said was the change in enthalpy. This delta H is always written as a negative because the system itself no longer contains this energy. It has given it up to the surroundings. We think of this as being reactants going to products plus heat or energy. If we have an endothermic one, then we are ending up putting energy into it. That would mean that we had reactants plus energy because we had to add the energy to make this happen and then be becomes products. This delta H is going to be positive because it is now included in the system. This is a potential energy whenever we're looking at these things as in terms of the chemicals. An exothermic reaction has more potential energy before it happens. It gives up some of that energy. So conservation of energy, all right? We have less potential energy, but we've turned it into heat. Well, what is heat is another form of energy. And temperature is a measure of kinetic energy. We expect that if we took potential energy, we turned it into heat. Heat is motion. Motion implies kinetic energy. That means the temperature goes up. So anytime you see a delta H that is negative, temperature will be increasing. And if you do this, this is temperature is going down. Now this is a very difficult concept because quite often, how do we add energy? We add heat to it with a Bunsen burner. We increased how much energy it had inside of it. So why am I saying temperature goes down? This is us putting heat into it and we think of that as raising the temperature, but it's being absorbed and making the product have more potential energy. If it's endothermic, you're going to have the exact opposites here. 